Wouldn't it be awful if all dreams came true? If all 15,000 eggs that came from one crab hatched, wouldn't that be awful? Everybody has their own goals that they wish to accomplish, but whether it be an unfortunate accident or circumstances where they have no control, the idea of having a normal life is the only option. So it would be kind of shallow if your only goal in life is to live out the status quo. The line mentioned earlier comes from a manga by Furuya Minuro called Timizu, a tale of a troublesome adolescent who tries to live a normal life but ends up trying his best to live his life to the fullest. Judging from the plot synopsis, this may seem like a slice of life manga, but do not be fooled as it presents a no-holds-barred, ruthless, and real depiction of the mundane while not taking itself too seriously. start off with the main character, Yuichi Sumida, a 15-year-old ghost with the deadbeat of a father and naive mother. Sumida runs the family boat rental business. Keiko Chaizawa, a schoolmate who has a crush on Sumida, befriends him while taking up the role of pseudo-guardian. There are also Sumida's friends who go to extreme lengths to help him, especially when the Yakuza turn up to collect an unpaid debt left by his father. This would be the catalyst for the change of mindset by the main character as he starts to live life to the fullest. However, the battles against his inner demons become frequent. Thus, later on, Sumida makes a promise within himself. After one year, if he does not fulfill a particular goal, he would end his life. Sumida soul searches. He quits school and even graduates while being absent for a long time. He gets a part-time job at the pachinko parlor, grows out his hair, and even gets a tattoo. Change is easier said than done. Most people eagerly try to reinvent themselves with the hope of vanquishing their dark side and it is this eagerness that hurts them in the end. Because if you are in a hurry to change, then it is most likely that you would return to your old ways. It takes acceptance, humility, patience, and self-awareness to fully undo a habit that has been imprinted within you. And it only gets harder with age. There is no clearer example of this than the homeless man that Sumida helps. His name was not stated in the manga but he ends up in the boathouse because of the rain. Sumida unconsciously gives him another shot in life by giving him a place to stay, a job, and a haircut. It is later revealed that the man is a huge pervert and shows predatory behavior. It only took a single conversation with Chaizawa for his lust to take over and soon enough, it would later bite him, subsequently throwing away his second chance at life, proving he had not overcome his greatest weakness. Life likes to toy with us. It is not assured that you would rise from poverty. It is not assured that you would find yourself a job once you graduate. It is not assured that you would have a wife and children in the future. Fate shows no favoritism and nothing is always as it seems. With that reality in mind, we drift off having our own sick fantasy. But with the ignorance comes consequences. This is highlighted in the manga through Nogami Yoshihisa. In the process to fulfill Sumida's promise, he encounters the epitome of being caught in your own world. Nogami has an unhealthy obsession with his next-door neighbor, Tei, who lives out his fantasies and lies about it to his friends. He breaks into her room at night while doing obscene things and stalking her. This would result in him assaulting Tei's boyfriend. Unbeknownst to Nogami, Sumida was keeping a close eye and stops Nogami while trying to kill him. Furuya Minoru does a really good job of presenting these scenarios with no biases, proving the point that you have the ability to control parts in your life, and your actions have consequences. That is why I love this manga and the seinen genre in general. After a year, Sumida's final confrontation, oddly enough, came from the person that tried to help him in the first place. In the earlier chapters, Sumida confesses to Chaizawa about how he murdered his father. She tries to convince him multiple times to turn himself in. Ultimately, he makes a deal with her. If he completes his goal of catching bad guys, he would go to the police and tell them everything. However, 
we all know this is not his true intention. Ultimately, with his failure, Chaizawa tells the police about his wrongdoings, and an officer comes to arrest our protagonist. Sumida asks if he could sleep in the boathouse for one more night and the officer agrees. Chaizawa stays with him, and this is where Sumida's battle with his inner demons come at a boiling point. Up until now, he has been trying to evade from being fully consumed, but with one final look into his soul, he jumps. Now, did Sumida live his life to the fullest? Well, to answer your question, to me at least, yes. Was it textbook and clean? No! Like I said before, life likes to toy with us. In some cases, we do not choose our life, but our life chooses us. For Sumida, the switch was very dark to see, but quite satisfying at the same time. It was 100 or 0 for him, and he put up a good fight. This isn't a manga for everybody. It tackles themes in a very vivid way, but if you like seinen manga and you are over the age of 18, I highly recommend it.